Hello everyone. Back again with film recaps. The movie opens with former Special Forces agent Frank Martin, who works as a professional courier in a small town in France. He strictly enforces a number of unbreakable rules, such as not being able to break agreements, not knowing the client's identity, and never opening the contents of entrusted packages. One day, a new assignment arises, and Frank accepts the contract, driving the rental car to a bank without realizing that the customers this time are a group of masked robbers. While police sirens echo closer, Frank casually observes their operations, pressing a button that changes the car's plate number, as the burglars proceed to enter the vehicle. However, he refuses to drive away because the robbers have broken an agreement. They had told him that the passengers would be three, and now they were four. They try forcing him to drive at gunpoint, but he refuses. He explains that he had calculated the weight of the car and couldn't take more than three passengers. The group leader becomes increasingly frustrated, so he takes drastic measures, killing one of his men and sacrificing his life to ensure a smooth escape from the police who are trying to catch up. Frank drives the car with extraordinary skills, nimbly navigating the narrow streets of the bustling city revealing that his skills go beyond the pale in every situation. Later, he drops the robbers at their destination, and they pay him for his services, though with extra money. They want Frank to drop them off at another place, but he declines because it wasn't part of the agreement. Frank returns home, washes the car off signs of his work, and replaces the number plate with a new one. He sees on television that the police have apprehended the three robbers he had earlier escorted. At that moment, Inspector Tarconi approaches Frank's doorstep inquiring about a black BMW engaged in the last incident with indicators of extraordinary driving skills. Tarconi begins to suspect that they are fancy-dressed Italian mobsters, and Frank admits that he has been out of town recently. Despite living alone, Tarconi is dubious of Frank's tidy life, but Frank avoids further questioning, and Tarconi leaves, promising to return to find out more. A new job arrives, and Frank accepts it that day when he meets a bunch of gangsters in a cafe. They instruct him to deliver a 50 kilograms item, and Frank sternly explains the shipping fees and the unchangeable rules of his work. The criminals eventually agree to his rules, and Frank burns his transaction records before departing. The next day, Frank waits as the gangsters load the package into the trunk of his car and he drives off, but suddenly he notices that his car tire is flat, so he opens the trunk to get the spare tire and sees the package moving but he chooses to ignore it and focus on repairing his tire. Frank stops for lunch and buys some cold drinks, but curiosity eventually overcomes his adherence to his own rules, so he opens the package only to see a frightened woman inside. Frank cuts a hole in the plaster, offering her juice, and proceeds on his journey. But the hammering from the back trunk becomes so loud that Frank stops again, removes the tape, and the woman explains that she needs to pee. Frank pulls the girl out of the car and gently puts a rope around her neck for protection, giving her an opportunity to finish her business in the woods. Shortly after, Frank pulls the rope that bound the girl, only to discover that the cords have been severed and the girl has simply vanished. The girl attempts to flee into the woods, but Frank, with his ingenuity and skills, is able to track her quickly and jump in to catch her. Frank carries the girl over his shoulder, and he returns to the car but he is surprised to find a group of cops waiting for him there. When they try to arrest him, Frank throws the girl down and quickly takes care of both cops with a few punches before continuing on his way. Frank arrives at his delivery destination, where he meets a wealthy American gangster known as Darren, who complains about the delay and suspects that Frank opened the package. However, 
Frank assures Darren that he followed the established rules. Darren approves his words and orders one of his men to pay him. Before leaving, Darren assigns Frank another job, this time to deliver a suitcase, and Frank accepts the assignment only after ensuring that the weight is within the parameters he established. While returning to his car after buying a drink at a repair shop, Frank's car explodes, flinging him into the air. Frank quickly attacks the men, speculating that Darren is the one behind the explosion. Frank goes to the garage and steals one of the cars before fleeing. However, he is surprised when he learns the woman is in the car, which makes Frank very furious. He initially abandons the girl in the middle of the road, but then changes his mind and takes her to his house. Frank begins to question the girl's identity and origins, but she seems talkative, so he ignores her. He then serves her noodles for dinner before retiring to his bedroom and allowing the girl to accompany him. The girl, whose name is Lai, starts exploring the house and discovers several awards and photos from Frank's time as a soldier. Meanwhile, Darren pays a visit to one of his men in the hospital, where he learns that Frank is still alive and resolves to kill him to avoid speaking to the police. The next morning, Frank wakes up to find Lai arranging flowers she had taken from the garden. She made him coffee and breakfast, and when she goes to fetch milk at the door, Inspector Tarconi is already at the entrance. Lai claims to be the new cook, and the inspector enters to join Frank for breakfast, showing him the burnt license plate and inquiring about his car. Frank makes up a fake story about his car being stolen while he was shopping, and Lai backs up his story by claiming to be the one who gave him a ride. The inspector is skeptical and wants to see the car, so Frank takes him to the garage to show him the S-Class, which he remarks is too luxurious for a cook. When his attention is drawn to the woman claiming to be Frank's romantic girlfriend, he becomes even more suspicious and plans to file a report without evidence, and then invite the two of them to come to his office later to provide further explanation. However, Lai refuses to accompany Frank, making him even more upset about all the trouble she has caused. Frank notices that everything appears to be quiet until suddenly a rocket is fired, causing a large explosion but they manage to jump under the table to survive. The gangsters outside the house begin shooting at the building with automatic rifles, forcing them to jump for safety. A larger rocket arrives, prompting Frank to grab Lai and carry her to the lift, where they make it down just as the explosion destroys their entire house. They then swim through the dark waters with the help of a diving device kept by Frank and make it to his safe house. Later at the station, Tarconi feels Frank has a prior enemy who is out for his life, but Frank says he has no knowledge of the attack. While Tarconi is called downstairs for another reason, Lai seizes the opportunity to access his computer and swiftly prints out information about Darren, just before Tarconi returns and catches them behaving romantically. Tarconi offers him a stay at his brother's hotel in solidarity with Frank's homelessness. Frank respectfully denies the offer, stating that he likes his own hotel but Lai does not hesitate to accept the money. As Lai takes a taxi with plans to track down Darren, Frank refuses to join her, despite Lai revealing that Darren had blown up his house. However, Lai begins to cry as she reveals that there are 500 people trapped in the container, including her family, and asks Frank to assist her. Although initially hesitant because Frank fears Lai will exploit his weakness, Frank's pity eventually leads him to assist Lai in ambushing Darren in his office. With a gun pointed at him, Frank demands an explanation for why Darren attempted to kill him, and Darren reveals that Frank violated his own rules by opening the package, while Lai searches for the smuggling files. Frank tries to assist Lai in her search for the file, while Lai holds the gun. Darren, however, reveals the lies about her father, who is also a smuggler. Mr. Quai arrives to greet his daughter, and Lai draws a pistol, demanding that he seize his axe. However, Mr. Kwai remains unfazed and instead dares Lai to shoot him. He then threatens Frank, asking Lai to drop the gun. Darren summons Leo to fight Frank, and Darren manages to knock Frank out just as Tarconi enters the room. Darren accuses Frank of kidnapping his friend's daughter, though Tarconi doubts the accusations but has no choice but to imprison Frank. 
After seeing who he is dealing with, and the charges they are making, Tarconi isn't sure Frank could get away quickly unless Frank provides new, accurate data to help him. So Frank explains Darren's smuggling plans, and Tarconi trusts him since he knows Darren's shady past. T. Tarconi asks Frank to be patient because there are procedures that must be followed in order to free him. But Frank's impatience grows as the lives of the people trapped in the container become increasingly dangerous. Arconi eventually agrees to help him, especially after hearing that Frank is able to solve the problem quickly, so Frank pretends to take Tarconi hostage as they break out of prison. They escape by car, and then they arrive at the dock. Frank returns Tarconi's weapons because he already has a full load on the boat. He then sails out into the open sea and arrives at the shipping location, checking the containers one by one with a stethoscope and searching for the smuggled people. Meanwhile, Darren arranges the transportation, but as they leave, Frank shoots one of the goons, and a battle ensues. Frank then climbs to the top of the container, where he witnesses Darren leave with the convoy of trucks. Frank runs past several containers before jumping onto one of the passing trucks. But the driver sees him and tries to let him go, so Frank jumps on top of a bus passing underneath him and runs all the way to the bus stop. However, Darren's men are there, so the fight resumes. But when additional men arrive to battle Frank, he smears oil all over the floor, causing them to lose their footing and Frank knocks them out with a floor sliding move. Frank then breaks a bicycle pedal to use as a foothold on the floor, and he fights them and defeats them all. However, gunmen appear and begin shooting at him, so Frank quickly uses the man's body as a human shield and jumps through the window into the water. The men then throw oil into the water and begin to burn it, so Frank takes oxygen from the dead man, swims to safety, and returns to the bus stop where he gets his clothes and a gun from the man and then steals an old car. When he spots a plane flying by, he instantly follows it and borrows it to monitor the convoy of trucks from the air. He instructs the pilot to call Tarconi before parachuting and successfully landing on the container. He then gains control of the truck, throwing the man out and dangling from the door before tumbling into the road and careening into a ravine. Darren pulls out his revolver and attempts to shoot at him from the back of the car. When Darren approaches from the side, Frank uses the broken glass to peek behind him, and he manages to knock the gun out of his hand. Darren strangles Frank. So Frank drives away while attempting to overpower Darren, but Darren manages to lock Frank's neck and knock him through the windscreen. Everyone assumes he is dead, but Frank survives after hanging under the truck. Mr. Kwai notices him and attempts to shoot him, so Frank takes a wrench and throws it at the driver causing the car to swerve and throw him off the road. Frank then attacks Darren again and forces him out of the truck. After seizing control of the truck and stopping it, Frank finds himself at gunpoint as Mr. Kwai forces him to walk towards a ravine, where he would be killed. When a gunshot rings out, they assume Lai is dead, so Kwai intends to murder Frank. 